And it's my distinct privilege and honor to be able to introduce to you our two speakers. Uh, presenting first this afternoon will be Andre Leduc. He is the manager of the National Anti-Spam Coordinating Body within the Digital Policy Branch at the Department of Industry in Canada, where he specialized in policies regarding to cybercrime, uh, cryptology, spam, and related online threats and cybersecurity. He was the lead architect for the Canadian anti-spam law and has appeared in front of parliamentary committees in order to defend the legislation. His previous role was as an e-business development analyst in Industry Canada, where he worked closely with both Statistics Canada and the private sector in uh, the developing metrics to track electronic commerce and ICT use in Canada. He was also a member of the uh, Canadian e-business initiative uh, secretariat and played a leading role in the de development of uh, Canadian net impact studies. Our other speaker today is uh, Sean Brown from Ottawa. He's director of the board of the Coalition Against Unsolicited Commercial Email, COUS, which is an all-volunteer uh, collection of internet and user advocacy organizations, uh, in case you've never heard of COUS before. Uh, in his day job, he's an attorney focusing on privacy, uh, online marketing, and information management. Sean has advised the Canadian government during the uh, st storied journey of that legislation across the legislative landscape, and uh, also other privacy legislation, now spends a lot of his time helping out clients uh, where it comes to preparing for when Castle uh, comes into effect. And with that, I'd like to uh, bring Andre on for the first presentation. Thanks, Andrew, for the uh, for the intro. I'm going to go through a really quick overview again of the legislation just to give you the background and context. Sean's going to come up uh, after that and then I'm going to finish up with, uh, with the forthcoming Industry Canada regulations. Take a second to read this. Um, we're the Department of Industry. We're not one of the three enforcement agencies responsible for the application of the law. So uh, I'm not uh, permitted to interpret um, the legislation, but I can tell you everything in terms of the black and white what it's about. So we originally tabled uh, the legislation for the first time in 2009. Finally, by December of 2010, it was passed. Uh, we had uh, the first set of reg draft regulations out for consultation last summer. Uh, that uh, period concluded on September 7th of last fall. Uh, we received over 55 submissions. Um, seeking uh, additional clarification or further exemptions or exceptions from the application of the law. Uh, so we went uh, away for a few months and did our homework, um, looked into uh, whether or not uh, there was a, a reasonability test, basically, whether or not uh, the exemptions that were being sought from industry associations and private sector uh, stakeholders were legitimate enough to merit uh, new regulation exempting or accepting uh, certain classes of messages or activities from the application of the law. Uh, the coming into force is expected either very late next year or early 2014. Uh, the idea there being that once we finalize the regulatory environment, uh, we want to provide uh, a period of time, say six to eight months, uh, for industry stakeholders to uh, become compliant with the law before we enact. Um, when we publish to part two, so then this set of regulations will only be published to part one in the coming weeks. Uh, we will republish likely early in 2013 final regulations. When we publish those final regulations, we will be declaring the coming into force date of the legislation therein. Uh, again, likely late next year or early uh, in 2014. CASEL is an administrative and regulatory regime, and it was modeled on international best practices. We were very late in Canada coming to the table uh, with spam legislation. Uh, so what we did was we asked all of our international partners from Australia, Japan, Europe, the UK, and the US, uh, what was working best with their legislation, what wasn't working with their legislation, and we developed this new regime. The regime includes new violations, uh, consent and form requirements, uh, before you can send or install computer programs or alter transmission data, collect personal information, etc. Uh, a private right of action that was modeled on can spam but expanded to include uh, any consumer or business and class action lawsuits. Uh, administrative monetary penalties, which are significant, and these, 
These are significant so that we might address the spam business model where spammers are making uh, sig significant amounts of money uh, in terms of revenue from, from spamming and phishing activities. Uh, mechanisms that will allow the three enforcement agencies and the government to uh, enter into agreements and arrangements with our foreign counterparts so that we can quickly share evidence and information about uh, malicious activity or threats. And it's an extended liability scheme. So we can go from A to Z if you have a, a business who hires a, a marketing developer, who hires uh, an email marketer, an internet marketer, who hires uh, an affiliate, and the affiliate ends up hiring spammers. Everybody in that chain that hasn't um, clarified that they will not uh, contravene the act can be held liable. Uh, finally, um, I work at the National Coordinating Body in Industry Canada, and we're coordinating the activities between the three enforcement agencies and the government in terms of uh, developing the regula regulatory environment and compliance guidance for business. And there will be a spam reporting center, which we're in the process of establishing now. Uh, that will be posted uh, to the fightspam.gc.ca website. And this will be uh, a place where Canadians will be able to send and report incidents of spam, text message spam, phishing attempts, malware, etc. Uh, it should be up and running uh, at some point in 2013. We'll have further details over the next couple MOGs. So what does the legislation prohibit? These are the six violations I spoke of previously. Spamming, so you can't send a commercial electronic message without consent or have an exception or an exemption within the, uh, the rules. Um, hacking, so these were designed to go after the man in the middle attack, so you cannot alter transmission uh, data without consent, uh, unless of course you're a telecom service provider, in which case you're exempt from the legislation. The installation of, mal of computer programs without consent, again, this is designed to address uh, malware and the installation of uh, uh, bots and uh, keystroke loggers, etc. Uh, to address online fraud, you can't make a false or misleading representation in a commercial respect uh, in the online environment. You can't harvest addresses, so you can't use a, an address harvester. Uh, to collect. You can also do a dictionary attack, which is going to be really interesting in the mobile space where people just use an area code and then they've got the next three digits. I got 219 and then I run the 10,000 numbers thereafter. You can't run those, so those robocall type setups in a commercial respect won't function. And then lastly, privacy invasion. This was, we got at, Sp at spyware in two different ways. So we get it on the installation. We also get it um, when they remove the personal information after that spyware is installed and they're removing that personal information off of the uh, computing, uh, uh, off of the computers, they're doing so without consent. So this, that was our attempt to kind of address the online threat environment and kind of gives you the A to Z in the act. There are three primary rules when we explain it to small businesses. This is the simplest way we know how. One, have consent before you send a commercial electronic message or you install a computer program. Two, identify yourself. And three, provide a functional unsubscribe or an uninstall. So this slide basically gives you an, a quick overview of the size and scope of the penalties involved for the six violations on the, uh, the left. So we're talking about the violations, the penalties that can be accompanied uh, by those violations, and the enforcement agency that's responsible for it. So for spamming, traffic rerouting, the man and mental attack, and malware, the CRTC is uh, responsible for enforcing those aspects. Uh, for, on the fraud side, for false and misleading statements, it's the Competition Bureau, very similar to the Federal Trade Commission south of the border. And for address harvesting and those privacy invasions using spyware, uh, Office of the Privacy Commissioner in Canada is responsible. Only the CRTC and the Competition Bureau have those administrative monetary penalties. These start at zero and work their way all, all the way up to, in the case of the Bureau, $750,000 uh, per violation for individuals. In the case of the CRTC, it's a million. Uh, the uh, ratios are a little bit different for business. So in the case of the CRTC, it's $10 million. And for the Bureau, uh, it can go up to $15 million. I mentioned the private right of action uh, previously built on the American model, but expanded. Um, and the important thing here, um, if you're a company and you're doing a risk assessment on 
you know, are we far enough along in the compliance? Take a look at, in section 20 at the factors that have to be considered. These would have to be considered by the CRTC or by a judge in a, in a private uh, case. Uh, and these have to be taken into account before they can assess the damages. And it takes into account things like the nature and scope of the violation. Uh, was it malicious in its intent? Um, did they profit from the commission of the violation, et cetera? And if you really haven't done any of those things, if it was an honest mistake, it's going to be very difficult for the CRTC or uh, a judge in, in, a, uh, in a court to award the, the significant penalties um, that most people are really uh, concerned with uh, in terms of the act. And, th and that was really done uh, because it is not meant to be penal. It's a, regula it's a regulatory administrative law framework uh, that is designed to encourage compliance rather than uh, be penal. I mentioned the Spam Reporting Center earlier. Uh, this is going to be our, basically our massive ed evidentiary database. We're going to see the size and the scope of the violation as Canadians start reporting this in. We'll get the text message spam reports in. We'll be able to see uh, just how uh, far and wide the scope of, uh, of the potential violations uh, are that have occurred. As I mentioned previously, we had a consultation session uh, on our regulations originally last summer. Uh, we'll be going out again uh, in the coming weeks to part one for consultation. So we're happy to hear back from uh, industry stakeholders, both north and south of the border, uh, about the issues that might be raised regarding our, uh, our regulations. I'll go into more detail on those a little bit later. Uh, Sean will describe the, the CRTC regulatory environment uh, and some of the requirements that come along with that in terms of the law. And with that, we'll pass it off to Sean.